Benjamin Ma. I work at University of California, San Francisco. I'll be showing you guys today the modified Lemaire technique for lateral tenodesis, usually for revision ACL surgery or with patients with large pivot shift. And I'm going to identify, you know, where the IT band is. Okay. And I'll take a strip of tissue, usually about you know, maybe seven to eight centimeter long along the fibers of the IT band. And I take about nine millimeter wide with that tissue. Uh, this should be an area that's pretty easy to kind of identify the layers. Especially early on in your practice, make sure you get the tissue long enough because you can always go um, cut it shorter, but you can make it longer over there. So extend a little bit more proximally uh, to go towards the back of the condyle. This is the back of the condyle, which is where we're going to anchor it down over there. So once I know that I passed the area, uh, I would actually cut my IT band off over here. So that's my IT band exposed right now. It's about you know, nine millimeter wide. It's about you know, almost seven to eight centimeter long. And what we're going to do is going to go underneath the LCL and put it back of the you know, femoral column now to give some uh, rotatory uh, in, um, stability. At this point, I'm going to find the lateral collateral ligament, uh, which is the structure going up and down of this area. Okay. And you can easily identify it you know, using a scissors go behind the tissue okay. and then go also in front of the tissue over there. It's actually much thinner band than you expect it to be compared with like an MCL or even the palpatis tendon a bit you know, bigger than this over here. Okay. Yes. Since the tissue is relatively thin, I could just have the hemostep come through and grab that IT band over there. And that's actually where we're going to put the tissue, right in the back of the column down over there for the patient. Okay? For me, I use a why not anchor. I anchor down right along the back of the femur. And these are all suture anchors, which are really easy to use and quite good fixation also. So yeah. And this cleat system is really helpful because when you pull, it almost like self-tension the sutures over there for you. Okay. I double check the fixation, make sure it's actually in a good anchoring. Uh, and this is the length of the tissue I'm going to put through. At this point, I'm going to put some crack house suture through the tendon itself. There are two suture for this particular anchor. So I actually pass two crack house suture through each side of the uh, iliotibial band. I put the free loop then through the middle of the tissue and what happens is that when I pull on the free loop it would actually automatically bring that tissue down to the anchor itself. Yeah. So this is my pull through suture, this is actually you know, through the other ends of the anchor, this is actually the locking stitch through the tissue. I'm going through the middle of that tissue and come through. So when I pull on this side it will automatically bring that tissue down to the bone. I put a knot at the end over there so I know which one it is when I actually suture on the other side. Then I go to the top part of the anchor right now and grab the other suture. So again, this is my locking stitch. My free end is actually through the anchor and that also dictates where that tissue is going to be tensioned towards. So I will make it a little bit more distal to where the anchor point is going to be so I have some tension to the tissue. So, so again, this is going to be a little bit more distal to where I put it. So when it pulls through, it will anchor that TMZ down. So again, I tie a knot over here for this side, so you know. Two locking stitches, two passing sutures over here. These are the ones with the knots over there. So what I do is I basically pull it up on the knotted side. It will automatically cinch that tissue all the way down. Now prior to that, on this particular patient, I'm going to cut this to make sure that we have the right length of the seodesis. So this is actually the finished fixation over here. You can see, you know, see with this tissue wrapping underneath the lateral coil ligament to go around the femoral column, it does control a lot of ro rotatory stability. You can see how this patient actually having improved the stability already just with fixation of this lateral tenodesis. After this, I'm going to cut the suture short. So for this one, anyway, I'm going to close the IT band. It's important because if you don't close this area, um, sometimes patients will do have some muscle herniation, which is very not pleasant, both cosmetically and also functionally. So it should not be you know, too tight anyway, uh, because um, the amount of tissue we took out was only about nine millimeters or so. so yeah. So I think this is a very simple way um, to do a lateral tenodesis. I think the technique is quite simple. Anatomy is, once you get used to it, it's fairly easy to find. There's not a lot of dangerous structures on this part of the knee, especially when you're above the, um, the fibula. And I think the uh, Why Not RC give you a you know, slightly um, a easy fixation uh, and also a device that you could actually anchor down. Even though you're close to the ACL femoral tunnel over there, it doesn't you know, affect that fixation at all. So this is the finished exposure on the lateral side of the knee. And I think that sometimes if you do outside in drilling, for example, using a retro reamer, uh, you could possibly use that as part of your incision, extend that you know, exposure on the lateral side. Cosmetically, actually do pretty well for patients. Thank you.